the Prophet ﷺ said, all prophets were given something which would cause people to believe in them. This is in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. The thing which I was given is none other than a revelation, the Qur'an, which Allah revealed to me. So I hope that I will have the most followers among them on the Day of Judgment. It was the definitive miracle of the Prophet This is the challenge of the Qur'an. You take all the Bibles in the world, all the Old Testaments, all the New Testaments, all the Torahs, every, all the, you know, the, the ancient Hindu texts, etc., etc. You get rid of them. You, hide them. you put them away in a vault. Also the Qur'an, you put it away. Nobody has access to these books. I tell you, in the city of Chicago, or in the city of New York, or in a small town in Georgia somewhere, even in the United States, we're not even talking going abroad. So long as you have one or two people that have memorized the whole Qur'an, you'll recover the whole book in a day. The whole book we can recover. How easy is that to do for, for other books? It's incredible that the book is preserved, even if you get rid of the physical books, it's still around. We have statements of scientific fact concerning the mountains, concerning the creation of the universe. How the Qur'an describes that the mountains have roots, which has only been discovered recently, the continental mountains have roots. And they help to stabilize the earth's surface. This is mentioned in the Qur'an. As far as it is known from the history of embryology, Little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolutely, absolutely no scientific training. Muhammad could not have known these facts about human development in the 7th century because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. Muslims and others are justified in concluding that these facts could only have been revealed to Muhammad by the one known who knows all about us, not only about how we developed, but how we live and function. And in Surah 13, Ayah 3, in the context of creation, we see, and it is he who expanded the earth and set thereon mountains standing firm and rivers. The concept of change in the geographic dimensions of the continents is a very modern concept. Perhaps the most intriguing thoughts are from a hadith in Sahih Muslim, where Muhammad states as one of the signs of the coming of the day of judgment that Arab areas will return to being fertile and green and with rivers. The archaeological and geological evidence that they once were green and will become green again is less than a century old. As far as the Qur'an is concerned, one of its most profound miracles is actually the word Qur'an. Qur'an comes from, in Arabic, comes from the word Qara'a, which means to recite. But the way it's formed with that an at the end, what it really means is that which is recited excessively. Now think about this. We're living in uh, the, the age of mass media. Some artist comes out with a song and a million MP3s are downloaded. And we are saying, we are arguing that one of the things that makes Qur'an miraculous, it is that it is the most recited. You have this song or this movie or whatever, that's on top of the charts. How long does it stay on top of the charts? Six months, millions of people are listening to this one song and humming it and singing it, whatever. Just one phrase in the Qur'an, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, is recited countless times a day by millions and millions and millions of Muslims every single day for the last millennium and a half. It's been, it's been on top of the charts. It's the most recited word. Mm -hmm. And it's actually more read statistically than even the Bible in the world. And the Muslims are not the majority population. Even then, being a fifth or less of the world population, this is the most recited book. Ask the people to produce something like the Qur'an. Or do they say he has forged it? They do not believe. Let them produce a similar recitation to it if they are indeed truthful. So this is the ultimate challenge. And there have been people in the past that have tried to meet this challenge. Musaylama al-Kadhab, he was alive during the Prophet ﷺ, and he claimed prophethood. And one of the verses that he came with, and so he says, Al-Feel, Mal-Feel, Wa ma adraka mal-Feel, Lahu dhanabun wabil, 
wa khurtumun tawil. He says, the elephant. What is the elephant? What will make you comprehend the elephant? He it has a fairy tail and it has a, a really long trunk. This is madness. Musaylam al kadhab he tried. He tried to challenge the Quran, but he failed miserably. And this, is, this challenge remains up until the Day of Judgment, and no one will be able to meet this challenge. The Quran has been looked at as the ultimate miracle by Muslim scholars from the very beginning. Some of those angles, like the most common angle, is the most difficult to explain in English. Why? Because the idea is that the Quran is miraculous in terms of its language. Something in the way Allah speaks, something in the way that He uh, communicates His message, is, is so profound and incredible that it can't even be translated. The message can be translated, but the miraculous beauty of the words can't be translated. He says, we made the Qur'an easy, we facilitated the Qur'an for remembrance and also means for memorization, for memory. Now the thing is, in this ayah, Allah says He made it easy. He didn't say the Qur'an is easy, He said Allah made it easy. So there's some kind of divine intervention here that makes the Qur'an easy to be understood or easy to, to memorize. Now, I personally am a testimony to this, but more than myself, hundreds and millions of people on the face of this earth that are not Arabs, that come from very different ethnic backgrounds, uh, children and adults of all ages, both genders, without photographic memory, have memorized this book beginning to end, cover to cover, exactly in identical form down to the way they're supposed to recite each syllable. The Qur'an is miraculous in its preservation. Western audiences have to look at this different perspective. Our idea of preservation is archives. Books, parchments, paper, documentation in libraries, transcripts. This is how we archive stuff. We are arguing that a much more powerful means of archiving and storing a document is having multiple sources, hundreds of thousands of people, memorize the same exact document from the very beginning. The Qur'an is a book, my brothers, that is memorized by children as young as six or seven years old, from beginning to end. And unknown numbers of Muslims through every generation have memorized this Qur'an. The Qur'an we have today is the same letter for letter, word for word. This book has been preserved. There is not a book like that. This book, the language of which, when the pagan Arabs heard it, it was enough to make them embrace Islam. Because they knew that no man could have written words of such beauty and eloquence and power and uniqueness. And the Qur'an challenged them that if you believe this book is from anyone else than Allah, bring one surah like it. And they could never do it. The Qur'an says about uh, Muhammad Wasallam. We have elevated your mention. If you know about the call to prayer in Islam, the Adhan, uh, the Adhan includes the words, Ashadu Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. I bear witness that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. And whenever we hear that, we send a praise upon the Messenger. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. If you look at the world today, Muslims are all over the world, and you know how there are different time zones? There is not a minute that goes by that there is not an adhan going on somewhere. Hmm. And in that call, whose mention is being elevated? The mention of yes. his last and final messenger is being, and people are hearing it and elevating his status by saying, May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. What did the Quran say? We have elevated your status. Can you imagine somebody else being praised like this? Consistently, every single day, 24 7, globally, across languages and cultures. And Allah, just one small statement in the Qur'an, we have elevated your status. We acknowledge that He is a slave of Allah, that He is not the one we worship, He is the one we obey because God gave Him revelation. And, and there are other mathematical nuances. For example, you have Surah Baqarah. It's made up of 286 ayat. In Surah Baqarah, there's a verse that says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وسطا. This is how we made you a middle nation. Now keep in mind, the Qur'an is recited. It's not documented, this is number one, this is number two, this is number three. That came later on. Yeah. That statement that we have made you a middle nation occurs in ayah number 143 of a surah that is a total of 286. Again, an oral tradition, a surah that was revealed different parts at different times and compiled over a long period of time. 
And yet even then look at the linguistic precision. You find in the Quran statements that are accurate concerning scientific facts that scientists have only discovered in the last 20 years. We have statements of scientific fact concerning the mountains, concerning the creation of the universe. Where Allah He tells us, have not the unbelievers seen that the heavens and the earth were united, joined together as one piece of creation. Then we rent them asunder and we made from water every living thing. The Qur'an describes the common origin of the universe, how it was rent asunder from this dukhan, from the smoke. Allah created the planets, the Qur'an tells us. And as if that is not enough, look at the frontier project of NASA right now. They're looking for a sign of life on Mars, spending about uh, $600 billion on it, over going, going $1 trillion. What are they looking for as a sign of life? Are they looking for emails, furniture? You know, they're looking for water. Because you find water, you're going to find life. How would Prophet Muhammad know that? Just recently, scientists discovered that that Big Bang is still happening. That explosion, the edges of the universe are still echoing and expanding at the edges of the universe. In Surah al variyat chapter 51, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And the skies, the heavens, we have created with our own powers, and we are expanding them. The Quran tells us how Allah placed in the mountains otad, like the pegs of a tent. How the Quran describes that the mountains have roots, which has only been discovered recently. The continental mountains have roots. And they help to stabilize the earth's surface. This is mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes how the involvement of a human embryo in a mother's womb. He said that we created a man from a nutfa, a piece of cloth. Then we made it into a piece of chew. And that piece of chew, we made it into a leech-like organism. And then out of that mudra, we created bones and then we fleshed him with tissue. Very specific, descriptive stages of involvement. That was there 1400 years ago. Till the advent of electronic microscopes, people did not understand what do you mean by a piece of chew in a womb of a mother. How would an illiterate man 1400 years ago give us pinpoint accurate scientific description that can only be seen into an electronic microscope 60 years ago. This is the creator of man, God, revealing that to Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. In the beginning of the chapter, the Romans chapter 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said it to the Muslims that you know there was continuous you know, win and lose battles between the Romans and the Persians being the two major powers. He said that the Romans will be defeated in the lowest point of earth. And then within 10 years, they would be victorious again. Not only that the same thing happened, that the Persians defeated the Romans first, and then the Romans had a major defeat over them. But then with the advent of satellites, that place with that battle satellites told us that it's actually the lowest typographical point on the face of the earth. It's exactly 393 meters below the sea surface, and the location is there by Route 90 in Palestine today. How would Prophet Muhammad have knowledge that can only be gained by satellites? Another interesting of the hundreds of scientific phenomena that are in the Quran. In a very curious ayah in Surah 57, Allah says, We sent iron down. We sent iron down. He, he, I mean, for mountains, He says, We created mountains. For the sun, He said, We created the sun. We created the earth. But for iron, He didn't say we created, He used a peculiar verb, we uh -huh. sent it down. I was talking to a few geologists about this. And they said they believe that the, the uh, iron came to the earth historically in the form of meteors. So, you know, and, and just the, 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 the verbiage of the Qur'an and that he sent it down, subhanAllah. So this in itself is a consistent subject. Prophet Muhammad said that the hour, which is the process of the end of time, would not happen till the land of the Arabs would come back to be valleys and rivers. SubhanAllah, it's a harsh, one of the harshest desert. As a matter of fact, there's a part of Arabia called al rub al Khali, the empty quarter, that you know, even animals cannot survive there. So how is it that Prophet Muhammad is saying, not only come back to become valleys and rivers, but it was valleys and rivers. Satellite technology, they took pictures, and they look underneath the ground, there is a huge network of rivers indicating that at the Ice Age time, Saudi Arabia and today's the Arab Peninsula was nothing but valleys and lush green lands and rivers. 
How would Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu know that? And we have the satellite picture in the book that proves it, 1400 years ago. This book on the one hand is a miracle, but on the other hand, it is a personal guidance for your life. It is personal, personal guidance for your life. It guides you and it shows you the way in your daily struggles. And I'm telling you this from personal experience and of those that are close to me. This book has opened doors. I know people that went to the library, started reading the translation of the Quran and they came back and they said, I didn't read the Quran, the Quran read me. Mm -hmm. This book is a good picture of where you stand with your Lord, what you need to be doing on a daily basis, which is why one of the greatest definitions of the Quran in the Quran, besides it being guidance, is that it's a reminder. People forget their purpose in life. People forget what they're here on the earth to do. They get dissuaded or they get you know, uh, distracted by entertainment and by movies and by YouTube or this or that or the other. They get distracted into many different things. And here you have a reminder constantly bringing you back to your essential purpose. Never will the disbelievers from the people of the book or the mushriki leave off their disbelief. Until there came to them Prophet from Allah, reciting to them a purified scripture containing upright laws. This is what we have. The pure scripture with the upright laws Allah has given us, my brothers and sisters, proof upon proof upon proof, so that we can know ourselves and we can prove to all of humanity that what Allah has revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is most certainly the truth. That Islam is certainly the deen before Allah. That Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is most certainly his last and final messenger. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahbihi wasallam.